Hi, I'm Carmen and welcome to my kitchen. Thanks for joining me for our first episode of Cooking with Carmen. As part of our mission to heal hunger, Operation Food Search teaches families how to cook delicious food on a budget. So today I'm going to show you how to make some homemade pizza and a bean salad. So it's using ingredients that you probably already have in your pantry. So this meal is perfect for a quick lunch or dinner that the whole family can enjoy. So today we're going to start with making our pizza dough. So our ingredients are all-purpose flour, baking powder, salt, milk, olive oil, and then our fun pizza toppings. So today I have some pepperoni, some sauteed onions and bell peppers, a couple different kinds of cheese. So I have some mozzarella and some Colby Jack in here, and then marinara sauce for the pizza. So to make our pizza dough, what we're going to do is we're going to have a bowl here, and we're going to measure out our flour first. So I just have all-purpose flour here, but if you have whole wheat flour, you can do half combination of like half whole wheat and half all-purpose to get some whole grains in there. So to measure flour, I always like to scoop the flour into the measuring cup um, and have it kind of mound over the top a little. And I take the side of my spoon or a knife and I flatten out the top so we have a perfectly measured portion here. So it's one and a half cups of the all-purpose flour. So first I have in that half cup. And now I'm measuring our one cup portion here. And this would be a great step to have kids help you. Um, if you have kids in your kitchen with you, they could be measuring the flour and learning some new techniques as well. So we have in our one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Our next ingredient is our baking powder. So I wanted this recipe to um, use baking powder as a leavening agent instead of yeast, which I normally use, because it has been very hard to find yeast in the store. So my mom actually, um, for Easter, got me some yeast in my Easter basket Easter basket, because I couldn't find any. So she went online and bought some for me. So baking powder is a leavening agent that contains baking soda and an acid. So if you think of the difference between baking powder and baking soda, baking powder actually has baking soda in it. But when you're baking with baking soda, you have to add an acid to get those bubbles to form. So what's nice about baking powder is it already contains that acid, so you don't need to add it. So and our other dry ingredient is salt. So we have a half a teaspoon of salt. We're going to add it into our mix. And then we'll just stir it to combine. You don't have to go crazy, because we'll be mixing it all up also with the liquids. So we have a half a cup milk and two tablespoons of olive oil next. And I have them already pre-measured in here, so we'll just dump the whole thing in all into our bowl and then we're just going to stir it to combine so you can use just a spoon got some powder all over me we're just going to stir it until a wet dough forms so you can kind of see it coming together here so you want to make sure that there's no dry bits left or no chunks of the liquid just make sure it's nicely combined and again what's nice about that um, baking soda, or the baking powder, I'm sorry, I got to mix the two. The baking powder already has that acid, so once it's combining with this liquid, the leavening is already starting to happen. So this yeast-free pizza crust comes together much faster than if you were using um, a yeast. All right, so now we have our dough here, so you can see it's nicely combined. So we're going to put a little bit of flour onto our surface here. And a little extra just in case and I'm gonna wear gloves so I don't have to disappear off camera and wash my hands but um, we are going to knead our dough now so this is another step that um, kids gonna kind of help you in the kitchen and it's kind of fun it has a cool texture so we have our dough ball and we have our floured surface here and to knead a dough you use the, the heel of your hand so you push down into the dough and then you take it over and fold it in half and push again. So you keep doing that. Um, we're going to do that about 10 to 15 times. So you just push and knead. And um, if you're using a yeast product, you actually have to knead for about 8 to 10 minutes because what the kneading is doing is it's aligning different proteins in your flour um, to form gluten strands. And the yeast needs that as it's, um, as it's creating those air bubbles. It needs a nice structure to get your product to rise. 
But since we're using baking soda, it actually rises a lot quicker and a lot more aggressively. So you don't need to knead it as long. So now that we have it kneaded, um, all we do is get it into a nice ball shape. So we have our ball. And then you take the bowl that you mixed it with and you put it over the top for about 10 minutes. So lucky for us, we're fancy here on TV. I already have one made and inverted in this bowl. So we have our um, already mixed up dough. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna cut this. So you can cut it in half, you can cut it into fourths and make little individual pizzas. So we're gonna cut it in half. And what's fun with this recipe is that if you're cutting it in half or in fourths, you're making smaller pizzas. So then everybody in the family can kind of get a chance to top their own pizza and have like a custom pizza night. So we're using a rolling pin to roll it out. And roll it out a little thinner than how you'd want to eat it because the um, baking powder, again, as it rises pretty aggressively, I like to say, um, will make your crust a lot fluffier than it appears when you're first rolling it. So it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. This is a homemade pizza, so it can be any crazy shape you want. And if you don't have a rolling pin, you can use a, a water glass or a bottle, just something smooth, so you can get your thinly rolled out dough. And I like to roll it on parchment paper because it comes off a lot easier than if you have it on your counter. But if you don't have parchment paper, just make sure your counter is floured so you have some flour laid down so you can make sure it, um, it doesn't stick to your counter. All right, now we have our dough rolled out. We're gonna get our skillet preheating. So you wanna make sure you have a lid for your skillet or a piece of aluminum foil. So we're gonna get our skillet preheating on medium. Um, so this pizza crust cooks for a few minutes on one side and you flip it over and top it um, if you're using a skillet. But you can also use an oven. So you're gonna preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Um, you bake the crust for about eight to 10 minutes. Then you take it out and top it with your favorite toppings and then throw it back in the oven. So I like using the skillet. It's a little faster. Um, and you don't have to heat up your house, especially in the summertime or on a very warm day. All right, so now we have our skillet, it's warm. So we're gonna take off our crust. And we're gonna to toss it in here. And if you're using a non-stick skillet, you don't have to worry about it sticking. But if you have a regular one, I would put down a little bit of olive oil. So we're gonna put the lid on there and let that cook again for three to four minutes on that one side, and then we'll come back to it. So while that's cooking, we're gonna get um, started on our salad. So we have a three bean salad, and we're gonna make a homemade dressing for it. So I love making a homemade dressing for any kind of salad, and this is my go-to recipe. So I start with um, a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. And this kind of helps get everything um, kind of mixed together well. So if you normally think of an Italian dressing, the oil and the vinegar tends to separate, but if you use a little bit of Dijon mustard, then it can kind of um, help it stick together. So the ingredients for our salad dressing are red wine vinegar, mustard, uh, olive oil, and salt and black pepper. So I have our tablespoon of mustard in here, and I'm gonna add in about two tablespoons of our red wine vinegar. And if you have other vinegars like apple cider vinegar, that would work well as well here, or even lemon juice. So you just put something a little acidic. So we have two of our tablespoons of our vinegar, and then we have three to four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. So I like to start with three, and then as I'm whisking it and think I need a little more, then I'll add the fourth tablespoon. So you just take a whisk. You can also use a fork. Or if you have like a glass jar, you can throw all these ingredients in a glass jar, screw the lid on, and just shake it up. You don't need any fancy equipment. So you just want to whisk to combine. And it uh, um, takes a few seconds to get everything combined. It doesn't have to be perfect. But here we go. Simple, easy. 
And now all I do is season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. So crack in some pepper, and a little bit of salt, and then we just whisk it up to combine. And I will tend to make way too much of this because um, I usually don't measure when I make it for myself. So if I make too much, I actually just throw it into um, a Tupperware container or a little jar and it keeps in the fridge for a few days. So it's nice that um, you don't have to rely on having salad dressings in your fridge. If you just have these simple ingredients, you can make your own and it keeps and it's delicious. Um, and it's a, an easy way to control the salt, the fat and the sodium that's found in a lot of already pre-made bottled salad dressings. All right, now we're gonna check on our crust here. Take the lid off. What I like to do is look, uh, lift up from the bottom and see if it's starting to turn a little brown. Got a, a few more minutes on here. So what's nice about um, this kind of quick and easy crust is that um, with the yeast, like I was saying earlier, kind of takes a little longer. So when you're using yeast as loving agent, you have to knead it much longer and then you also have to uh, let it rise. So with this baking powder recipe, it doesn't rise as long and it comes together a lot faster. So you can get to dinner on the table in like 20 minutes. And for a pizza night, that's pretty good. All right, so now we're gonna flip this over. Kind of like a giant pancake. So you can see it's a little lightly browned on here. So now that we flipped it over, we're gonna to top it with our toppings. So I have our jarred marinara sauce. And uh, if you don't have jarred marinara sauce, you're welcome to just use like a can of tomato sauce or crushed up tomatoes and add some Italian seasoning to it, um, like oregano or dried parsley or just the Italian seasoning blend. So now we have our sauce down. And then I like to put the veggies on next, um, underneath the cheese. So we have our sliced veggies. So I pre-saute these when I'm cooking the pizza in the skillet because in the oven, everything is getting heat and it's in there for a little longer. But when you're cooking with the skillet, um, the heat's coming from the bottom, not necessarily the top. So your veggies don't cook as, as well as they would in the oven. So just having that pre-sauteed will help with that. All right. We got our veggies on there. Now we're going to do our cheese. So we have some mozzarella cheese. We have our Colby Jack cheese. You can use any cheese you want. If you like a little spicy, you can do some pepper jack cheese. All right, got our cheese. And then I like to do the pepperonis on top. So again, it's your pizza, you do you. Decorate it. What's fun um, when we do um, classes with kids, we actually have them decorate their pizzas. And a lot of people will, or a lot of the kids will put little faces on there, make like a little rocket ship using some of the veggies. So it's kind of like a, a way to get everyone having fun, um, having art with your pizza. All right, so we're going to put the lid on so it melts, so the cheese melts. I'll actually turn it down a little because um, my stove or stove top tends to run a little hot. Okay, so we're going to have this, the lid on here and the cheese melting. And that'll just take a few more minutes. It'll finish cooking the crust from the bottom and get um, the cheese all nice and melty. So while that cooks, we're gonna finish assembling our salad. So the last ingredients in our salad, um, so we're making a bean salad. So this has cannellini beans, kidney beans, garbanzo beans, um, has a red onion and some celery. And if you have fresh parsley, that's a great addition to this as well. I actually don't have fresh parsley. So what I'm going to do for my dressing is I'm going to add a little Italian herb mix to the dressing. So that'll give a little herb flavor without having that fresh parsley on hand. So I have my Italian herb mix in here. I'm going to whisk it up. And really to assemble this salad, all you simply do is combine all of your ingredients together in a bowl, drizzle the dressing over it. So I have all of our ingredients in here. I drain the beans. So I'm using canned beans and I drain them um, and rinse them because it actually helps to remove some of the salt that's in the beans itself. Um, or you can get the no salt added or low sodium beans. But draining and rinsing is a great way to remove some of that extra salt. You can also use dried beans. 
So you do have to cook the dried beans before using them in a cold salad like this. So to um, cook them, you simply, um, there's like a quick method for rehydrating the beans. So you soak them um, in a pot with water for about, um, like you bring it to a boil and you let it simmer for about three minutes. You turn the heat off and let it sit for an hour. And then you bring it back to a boil and you cook it for about an hour to an hour and a half until the beans are tender. Or uh, if you don't have time for that quick soak, um, you can always soak your beans overnight and then cook them the next day. But that soaking really helps to break down some of those tough starches and gets it um, a little easier to digest. All right, so here is our beautiful bean salad. It's nice and colorful. And again, if you have those fresh herbs like parsley or, um, or like a regular or thyme, you can always add fresh herbs into this as well. They add a little bit of brightness, but dried just has great flavor as well. And it's what I had on hand. All right, so now we have our great salad here. And it looks like our pizza is about done. Our cheese is nice and melty. Watch out the lid can be hot. So then we're going to take our pizza out using a, a spatula and our stove off. And then now we have this simple, easy, homemade pizza. I'll show you the inside. Fun, simple recipe. Comes together super fast. You can see you got a nice fluffy crust, but it's not too fluffy. That's how I like it. Um, and it's customizable for your whole family. So everybody has a chance to make their own pizza. So I hope you today, I hope you enjoyed today's show. I'll be back next week with another episode. So keep, so keep an eye out. Um, every Friday, we're going to share a quick tip video. So I'll share that on our Facebook page and it'll be simple, fast recipes or different activities you can do with your family. So remember to like our page if you haven't done already and visit our website at operationfoodsearch.org to learn more about our work. So there's great information on there about how we're responding to the crisis that's going on now. Um, you can learn everything you need to know about how to get help and how to give help. Um, so stay safe and I'll see you next week. Thanks again for watching.